Greetings, beloveds. This is Amy Karen Johnson, the Earth Channel, Cosmic Earth Amy. As I mentioned in my last video, I am an astrologer, and the kind of astrology I use is very unique. So if you'd like to know more, please check out the links in the description below this video. Today I would like to offer you a throat center clearing and transmission. And while this throat center is very much the same as the throat chakra and will apply to yours and any throat chakra, it is also my perspective to look at what human design teaches us about the throat center and so I will be sharing a bit of that with you from that perspective or at least my perspective through that lens and I have with me today my drum there are some people who are very serious about using a drum and have certain rituals, conditions under which they believe they're the only ones in, under which a drum should be used. I have come to a place of peace within myself in using this drum, honoring where it came from as best I can. I do believe it is a goat skin, so it is not vegan or vegetarian. I apologize if that offends you. Feel free to move along to some other video that if you would prefer. But I honor the goat from which this came from my heart as best I can. So I invite you to take a deep breath with me. And let it all out. And I will begin with some drumming noises. Hopefully nice gentle drumming noises. So I'll just continue with this as I speak to you about the throat center you some context for this clearing. The throat center is one of the more unique centers from the perspective of human design and in case it isn't clear to you, the throat center is, or excuse me, the human design is a form of astrology and it combines astrology with chakras and with the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. Each of those hexagrams is related to a gate and those gates are located within the nine centers, not just seven, but nine. And through my perspective, The, it is the solar plexus that divides into three different centers. And so uh, I have explained that in other videos. If you're interested, you can go back and look at some of my older videos where I talk about that. But the throat center has the most gates of any center. It has 11 gates. And what that tells me and I think others as well is that there are many different voices and those voices will be affected somewhat by the definitions in your chart which you can discover through using your birth date getting a reading from me or going to a free chart generator but human design is rather complicated so if you would like some help understanding that I'm happy to assist. One of the unique things about the throat center 
is that it is integral in determining what they call in human design different types. They have types including a generator, a manifesting generator, a manifester, a projector, and a reflector. And I won't get into too much more detail about what exactly those mean, but the throat being connected to what they call a motor center. There are four of them. If the throat is connected to the sacral center, which is one of those motor centers, because it produces so much energy, that helps to create a manifesting generator. And there are other ways that a manifesting generator chart can look as well, but that's one of the main ones. One of the simplest ones, I should say. It's not actually my chart, although I am a manifesting generator, so there are definitely other ways. As far as the other three motor centers, they are the power center, one of the solar plexus centers that I spoke of, the emotional center, another of the solar plexus centers that I spoke of, and the root center. Those are the other three that produce energy of some sort. So if you have one of those three centers defined in your chart, not the sacral center, and one of those motor centers is connected through a defined channel to the throat center, then you would be considered a manifester. And there are a lot of valuable things associated with that. The man who channeled, as I would call it, the knowledge of human design into the world, Ra Uruhu, was a manifester. And I'm certainly grateful for him channeling this knowledge into the world. So he offered a lot of valuable things. However, I think that his perspective of manifestors was a little bit skewed by the fact that he was one. He talks about how much damage can be done when a manifestor is a child and is not allowed to choose or to initiate certain actions or certain courses of action, not necessarily by themselves, but by others even, and is instead constantly asked questions, for example. <laughs> so I'm starting to get a bit detailed here, I know, but to give you a little bit more background, just back up a little bit here for a second. The analogy that he has used in the past uh, for these types has to do with the fact that he, he says that, you know, emperors and rulers and, you know, even dictators, the ruling class of old were generally manifestors. And the slaves were generators. Now, he admits that this is an old paradigm and it is no longer needed, but I don't think he goes far enough in telling us what the new paradigm could or should be. He still maintains that manifestors make the best leaders and that they shouldn't be the ones to initiate and not necessarily any other type. I don't know for sure whether he spoke about this or not, of what I'm about to say, but I think it's critically important that anytime a manifestor or anyone 
tries to initiate some kind of action by telling someone what to do, it should always and only be done with their consent. I believe the time is well past where we need dictators in the world. And there are still people around who would happily, you know, follow a leader like that, which is fine. But I don't think it has to be limited to only people who are manifestors. I believe that initiation of various kinds can come from everyone. And the main thing we can learn about being a leader or initiating things like that through this paradigm of being a manifester, having a motor of some kind connected to the throat, is that we should only do that when we really feel called, when we feel aligned with such an action, with saying those words. It does have to do with your voice, your expression. We should always be cognizant and get consent from anyone else who is involved or affected by this initiation or this action and have their best interests at heart as well as our own. I'm not saying that we should necessarily put ourselves beneath others, but I think that we as humans have evolved to the point where we know better now how to collaborate, how to work together, you know, with cooperation, with free will, with giving everyone a choice in the matter. So, I hope that makes sense. There's another thing I wanted to clarify a little bit. I have offered you all in previous videos the mind wave scale and I have spoken a little bit about how I believe confusion can be a fairly high vibration. It can be in the alpha range which is a pretty helpful, productive, healthful vibration. And yet, I don't want to give the impression, I'd, ri I'd, ri I'd like to resolve the misconception that confusion is something that anyone should ever try to create. I do not believe that. What I meant by saying that confusion can be of a high vibration is that that kind of confusion that I was trying to refer to can mean that we're finally being having our eyes opened to the inconsistencies of this world and only once we start to realize how contradictory you know this play can be this the drama of life you know one minute you can be told one philosophy and that it's the only truth and the next minute the same people can turn around and do something completely contrary to what they were just telling you should be the only way so once you begin to see that you are likely to get confused about what is true what is right and that's the kind of questioning that I think is needed by perhaps more people to realize that there's more than one perspective, that there is always context and there are different contexts to every situation. And so once we begin to see that, we can then begin to honor and respect each individual situation, each individual as well, because we are all slightly different. You know, we all have similarities, we all have similar needs, but they aren't always the same, all of them, you know? 
and your unique voice will say something completely differently than mine, even if we might be talking about the same thing. But the, both perspectives are valuable. Both voices are valuable. So, if I'm ever sharing anything in a video that doesn't quite feel right to you, that's totally fine. You do not have to take whatever I say at face value. You're allowed to question it. You're allowed to add your own perspective. That's one of the reasons I really love the concept, at least, of improvisation. One of the rules in improv is that you're always supposed to say yes and to anything that your partners or fellow players may do or say. You're not allowed to say no because that brings everything to a screeching halt and it's no longer fun and it's no longer really improv. Only when you say yes and to something that somebody does or says are you allowing for their contribution and adding your own as well? And this is much more possible than most people realize. So these are some examples of ways of expressing your voice. And it doesn't necessarily have to be through words, it can be through sound, it can be through playing instruments. And one of the wonderful things that we can begin to learn from, not only through human design, but through the throat center and chakra in general, is the value of emptiness. If our throats weren't empty, hollow, we would not be able to make these sounds. If this drum wasn't empty on the inside, it would not be able to make this sound. And yet, because they are empty, hollow, wonderful sounds come through them. And this gets to another concept that I absolutely love. It's also related to the field of creativity, which is indicated by the word inspiration, for one, and it implies, the root of that word implies that spirit has come in, basically, a spirit of some kind, an energy of some kind, wanting to be expressed. They also call you know, the origin of the word genius. They used to say more along the lines in, I think, uh, you know, Italian in Italy, where this originated, that someone has a genius, not that they are a genius. This has been spoken of by many others previous to me, so I'm not claiming to have discovered this on my own, but the value of that is that it's okay to let other intelligence, other energy that feels good, that feels like it wants to be expressed, and that it can be helpful to be expressed in some way. It can be beneficial, generative. It's okay to let it come through you and when we try to stop those sorts of things out of fear, I mean, if it really doesn't feel good, that's completely fine. You don't have to say every word that comes into your mind. There are a lot of, I mean, we can often pick up these thoughts from other people's heads and that's not always the best place, if you know what I mean. But if you're able to get quiet to tune in to that still small voice within you 
and you can let it come through in whatever way it wants to, you know, as long as it's not harming anyone, as long as it's not hurting anyone. You may be surprised at how wonderful that can feel, not only because It is likely to be beneficial when it's coming from a place like that, from a place of love, basically. That's one of the best ways you can determine whether it's the kind of voice to let through. If it's coming from a place of love and caring, it's generative, it's beneficial, it's helpful then I highly encourage you to let it through. The reasons I think we don't sometimes is because we're worried about being judged, being thought weird, being thought silly, being thought nonsensical. And that's okay too. Hopefully, those people who think those things will just move on. Because those things aren't necessarily helpful at all. <laughs> They're not helpful, not beneficial, not generative. They might even be coming from someone else's head. <laughs> so I encourage you to let your light shine even when you're afraid of what other people will think it's okay to start out in ways that seem low risk to you you know maybe it's just for yourself for the time being at least But if there's even one other person out there who might be helped, please share it with them. Put it out there. People can choose whether to accept it, whether to listen or not. And maybe they will say yes and, and it will inspire them to let something else through that can be beautiful and wonderful. The other thing we learn about the throat center in human design is that there can be times when we are afraid of emptiness. And we either try to fill it by stuffing down our voices or we try to fill the emptiness with chatter that can be meaningless, sometimes it can be harmful. And so going into the silence can also be beneficial and it can lend more power to your words to your expression and help you to feel more ready about when it is time to bring them forth. So there's a balance to be found there. Silence for a time is always wonderful, I think. Most of the time, unless speaking out will prevent harm then you should certainly not hold back. But going into the silence and getting more comfortable with it is can be scary, I know, but it is usually beneficial. If it scares you terribly, I encourage you to find help and support. But if it's just a few minutes of discomfort, 
Or maybe you even want to use a little bit of music or sound to listen to that isn't overwhelming, that doesn't become an earworm, have you sing the lyrics over and over in your head. Something calmer. That's a nice way to transition into the silence, even if it's only for a breath. One conscious breath. I was just hearing Eckhart Tolle talk about how one conscious breath, whenever you think of it, can be better than meditating for even 10 minutes. And I really resonated with that myself, so I'm happy to pass it on to you. It was Elizabeth Gilbert who spoke in particular about not only having a genius, but how that helps relieve some of the pressure from us of the responsibility of, you know, the criticism if someone doesn't like what we express, or the accolades if someone does like what we express. It helps keep our heads from inflating or our egos from getting inflated, you know? And both, both of those can be problems. I hope you have found this helpful today. Namaste, beloveds. Greetings, beloveds. This is Amy Karen Johnson with a quick message just to let you know that I will not be creating a new video next week because I will be going in for a dental procedure and will need some time to recover from that. So if you are missing your weekly video, please check out my uh, third eye transmission video. I put that out as an extra video last week and not very many people have seen it as opposed to the first one which was a transmission about the power center and it was rather timely since I believe it came out around the time of the election as well as the the US election as well as the lunar eclipse so I think that's partly why it was more popular, but the third eye one is really good too, so check it out, and I will hopefully see you in a couple of weeks and let you know how everything went and how I am healing up. Thanks so much for being a subscriber, and if you're not, then please do subscribe. I will be coming back with more videos, and thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and letting me know what you like about the videos in the comments if you would. For example, I'm not 100% sure how much people have liked the singing bowl. And I will do more with the singing bowl if I know that you like it, so please let me know about that or anything else that you really particularly like. Newt says hi. I'm not going to do the singing bowl right now because he really doesn't like it and we're nice, warm, and snuggling together right now, so I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving since that will be the time when I will not see you and again, thanks for watching Namaste, beloveds